Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, I'm um, coming to you with a special guest, Ike. Uh, Ike is the newest addition to our farm, and he came the 1st of April, and everybody's been asking, what about this Ike fellow? We want to we know more about Ike, and I promised you all a video, and so today is that video. So t today, welcome, Ike. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Greg. Yeah, and I uh, just kind of wanted to hear your story, your background, and why you're pursuing this regenerative uh, ranching ag uh, journey, and kind of a little bit about yourself. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, I spent some time on a farm when I was younger, probably six, seven, eight. My dad's dad has a family farm down in Missouri, southwest, south, the Boot Hill part of Missouri, kind of just did row crops for a long time. Uh, and me and my siblings would spend time down there helping him out. And so we'd been around farming since that age. Didn't really pursue too much of farming in the high school, college area, but always had an interest in kind of regenerative ag and organic type production models. And then I guess I'd say the tipping point for me on trying to really jumping in full force into this was, I was actually working for the FSA in 2020, I believe, right when the pandemic hit and just really got an inside exposure to the sensitivity of our food supply system and just seeing it from that point of view and also really getting details on how much money was going to COVID bailouts and this and that for a lot of, in my mind, improper conventional ag techniques. And so that was kind of when I made the decision to pursue this regenerative stuff full time. And so that fall, I applied to Polyface actually, sent an internship, got accepted there and spent last summer of 2021 at Polyface. And then was able to meet Greg and Jan in person at one of the Stockman Grass Farmer conferences there and had been watching a lot of their YouTubes and fell in love with what they were doing, their grazing techniques, regenerative ranching aspect. And was able to meet them and applied for internship and came and tried out, I believe, October of last year, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And was lucky enough to have them call me back and have me come on. And as Connor was leaving, they needed another intern to come in. And Connor's, he was here and I think Isaac were here. Uh, the two permanent interns and well, Isaac's the farm, kind of the ranch manager. But I was able to meet Connor and hang out. Great guy. Um, super excited for him to be moving on to Tennessee and what he's doing there. And so Connor left off, I believe, well, he was here. <laughs> had to deload his car a little bit. It was yeah. rubbing tires. So he was here actually when I showed up end of March, last, but yeah, third week end of March sort of thing. And so he took off and I've been here for about, let's say two plus weeks, a little over two weeks now yep. doing that. So th this is the first time we've ever done this, Ike, where we actually are stair-stepping our interns instead of having two new ones come in at the same time. We had David come in December because he was available. And at that time, I think you were at a permanent job in, in Pittsburgh at yep. that time yep. doing construction. And it actually suited Ike better to come in April 1st. And so we, we stair-stepped him. And it's worked out well because now David's got a little time under his belt. And now Ike's coming in fresh. And, uh, you know, Isaac is our rock. He's just so awesome to to work with he's got a really good understanding of what's going on out here and oh absolutely and i don't think you could have a better work environment no i mean and even that the stair step too i think has helped a lot because dave's got i think at this point when i came in i think four months under him yep so both him and isaac have been great great instructors and teachers yep. i mean isaac's the best i mean he's so incredible teacher very humble very calm and the way he explains things just tons of knowledge for a guy his age too i mean he's got incredible potential moving forward whatever he wants to do really and <laughs> And having him and and Dave kind of have a couple months behind him too, as me onboarding was just has been tremendous. It's been, I mean, yeah, you, like you said, you couldn't ask for a better working. Yeah. Well, you know, Isaac, uh, he's not intimidated. You know, some people are intimidated by their, you might say, their their superiors. Isaac is so humble. He'll come up to me, and it's a really he knows it's a good idea, and I. But he he's humble enough. He said, "What do you think about this, Greg?" I'm like, "Let's go with it." Yep. You know, but. He still asks me if he thinks it's a good idea. It's like, Isaac, you know it's a good idea. Let's do that. So he's <laughs> always he's always challenging Jan and I, and I, I really appreciate that. And you, you can't move your farm forward without new thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, younger people, and I've, I've told you the same thing. Like, you come in here and you see things that, like, well, Greg, what, you all ever thought about doing it this way? I want that. I want that input. And some people aren't that way. Like, this is the way it's going to be done around here. And it's kind of like it's my way or the highway, and I, we're not that way at all. I don't, I don't think you can move forward. Oh, so, and Jan and I were talking the other day. I some of the best ideas that we've changed on our farm has come from interns. Yep, I believe it. 
Um, we used to have every pad, every farm had a set of permanent paddocks, little bitty things, you know, three to four acres. And on 160 acres, we might have 30 paddocks. That's 30 gates. That's 30 water systems. It was a, just a wreck. And so we had an intern named Jake, and Jake, if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, Jake is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he was a town boy. He was a town. He'd never been on a farm, but he saw me do a conference in Minnesota. He applied. Jan and I really liked his demeanor and his attitude. He was like, yeah, let's come on. And so Jake said, Greg, why you got all these permanent fences? You've got us. We've got the reels. We've got the step He said, it's just in the way. I couldn't see that. Yep. So, like this is the way it's set up. What do you mean take all this wire down? <laughs> <laughs> all that work I put yeah. in to put these permanent paddocks well, in. Well, and also, let me interject, yep. the NRCS, that's what they preached. Oh, well, yep. yeah, yep. to get cost share, you've got to put in permanent paddocks. You're right, Jim. And you got to leave it in there for 10 years. Well, we were past the 10 years. It could come <laughs> out. And so that's what we did. We took it all out. We rolled up. I think it was about 50,000 feet of permanent high tensile wire that winter. I had to slow Jake and uh, Chris down. They were going to take up everything. <laughs> went, no, wait a minute. We got to have some out there to, you know, for power. Right. But no, it, it was all good. But I, I've only been around you for two weeks, two and a half weeks, whatever. And Jan and I are both are just like, we're, we're very pleased with the way you're working, your demeanor. Uh, you can just tell when you meet certain people. Jan, you want to say anything on that? I haven't worked much with him, just a little bit, but yes. But you've been around him. Yeah, been, yes, he's a very enjoyable young man, and um, I hear he's a good cook and can't wait to try some of his dishes down the line. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are welcome anytime. I'm excited to cook some of that lamb up you gave us. There you so go. Be a treat. So, um, what's your, this, why'd you pick us? Um, I actually... To be honest, I had a couple other options I was mulling over coming out of Polyface in terms of trying to gain some more experience. But I knew then, at my time there, I was really, really, my passion was kind of in ruminants, cattle and sheep primarily. And in my mind, especially after watching a lot of Greg's videos, it's like, I, I got to try and go intern under this guy. I mean, I, I didn't, couldn't find anybody better, in my humble opinion. I was like, I loved what I saw in all the videos, loved his approach to everything, and just really, really, really wanted to come do that. Because we got a little bit of exposure of it at uh, polyface but i wanted to get some really really in depth and get a full year under my belt mm -hmm. calving season wintering yep. summer the whole thing just really as much immersion as i could and just hopefully soak as much up as i could too you know just be a sponge for knowledge and right. pick up as much as i could off of you during my time here and it's been absolutely fantastic i mean i couldn't i couldn't ask for anything but the other day waking up right outside my window we had the mob <laughs> First thing I do, open the blinds, and you've got the cow mob. I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> Just waiting to be moved right there at the gate. And we're taking yeah. them right over here, a couple, less than 100 yards away. I was like, that's how you wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and we're, right, we're just hitting the calving season. Oh, yes, yep. I think we've got, what number would that make? Five or six would so far? Uh, the one this morning gave us six or seven. Six or seven, okay. There yeah. was a ton of them. We could go out there any morning now and have 15. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be hot and heavy calving here in the next uh, 30 days, and we like that. We like to get it all done at once if we can, and you know, once you get all the baby calves born, it certainly makes it easier to move them. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. This morning, we had a cattle drive, and uh, you were telling me that, that we had a newborn this morning, Yep. and he made it half the way on the cattle drive. Yeah, he was uh, a little heifer calf, and his mama, they were doing really well. I mean, it was born, I assume, sometime last night or yep. this morning before we got out to check them, but... Kept up halfway. The gate looked really nice on her. Yeah, and she was took off a couple times, dead sprint for about a couple seconds. I was like, man, she's got some pep for <laughs> being less than a day old. But then, yeah, we got her up to about halfway, and you could tell she was getting a little tired. And so we're like, all right, let's bring the, the mule up and kind of carry her on, let Mama catch up with the rest. So, yeah, so we yeah. keep a wire cage on the mule, and you all just set it in the cage. And yep. Then when we got to the new farm, uh, they went and found the cow, and I had the calf on the four-wheel with David, and we just... Matched them up, and everything was good. Oh, yeah. So, very successful cattle drive. Okay. So, Greg, just because you did mention Connor, and we, I fit, did, I have noticed that some of the people are like, what's happened to Connor? Yeah. So, let's just say yeah. what's happened to Connor. Exactly. So, Connor and I, uh, we did a video together uh, at about the nine-month level, yeah, eight-month, and Connor just got absolutely overwhelmed with lots of offers from all the United States. 
from huge operations all the way down to people that had, you know, 80 acres. And anyway, uh, he ended up settling on Greg and Greg Brand and Debbie. Their farm is in Kentucky, and uh, they do direct market grass-fed beef, lamb, pork, uh, chicken, broilers, and his, Debbie's son has like a catering business. I mean, they got and, a lot and going on. And yeah, did I say pigs? Oh, if I wow. didn't. Yeah, so Connor's got a lot of different arms in the, you know, he's going a lot of different, and it's going to be good for him to learn a lot of the different species. And so, yeah, he's working for them uh, full time, and uh, we're excited for Connor. It's going to be a good learning experience for him. And, and, he's, I, and he's closer to home. He's closer to home. I think he's two hours from his mom. Something like that. Yeah, that's what he at. said, about two hours away. Uh, one of the markets they go to is in Tennessee, so yeah, I think it's a good. Ex it's going to be a great job uh, experience for him, and continue on his journey. But I'll say this, Connor, if you're watching this, uh, we certainly miss you. Uh, you were an awesome, awesome intern. You always showed up with a great attitude every morning. Didn't matter what we did, you just knuckled in and did it, and uh, you're going to do well. So thank you, Connor. And one more thing before we sign off. So it's uh, May. It's going to be May. Applications for our internship are coming due the end of August 31st. So I, how hard was it to do that application? Oh, not not at all. I mean, it's go onto your guys' website. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty self explanatory. We, you have to request. Yes, it. send an email and you'll get a uh, an application sheet back. I believe with a questionnaire on it, some questions to answer, and get some background information on the applicants. But yeah, it's not. It's super easy. Just you, you know how to send an email, know how to open up a Word document and fill it out. You're you're all set. So, <laughs> well, we're we're really excited to have you on board, Ike, and um, you're gonna make a. I think just from the little bit of exposure I've got from you so far, you're you're gonna do well. Oh, I appreciate it, Greg. And I really believe that, and um, somebody out there is gonna be a very fortunate person to have somebody like Ike come in and be a part of their team. So, folks, we're gonna get out of here. Just wanted to do this video. Everyone have a good a good day. And oh, I think there's like 20 spots left maybe on the advanced grazing school. If you're on the fence, don't don't be waiting another couple weeks because when it fills up, that's it. We're not gonna extend it and put more people in it. So every year, the last week we get 20 people that even can we have a spot? Can we have a spot? No. So don't don't procrastinate. So everyone have a good one, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Take care.